context, mm. I'll start with the global space. Yes. When we look at the global space, in most countries within the European or other regions, mm. they're given subsidies also for like uh, the ships and the vessels that go do deep sea fishing. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, this is something we want to look into. Because when they are given, when you give so much subsidy in that space, again, you create an element of a fishing. Within the Indian Ocean or the Kenya territorial waters, we have not experienced a lot of interest within the commercial fleet. We have at least seven, 20 commercial fleet. Mm -hmm. Our plan for development the fleet is around 73. Mm -hmm. That is a fleet uh, management plan. We have 20 currently that uh, we have licensed. Mm -hmm. So our resources within the deep sea, they are not overexploited or overfishing. But as a country, mm -hmm. we want to empower the fisher community so that they can also go offshore. What are we doing about it? We are giving them and supporting them on the right fishing gears and the right methods. Mm -hmm. And also doing capacity building within that space. Mm. But we must ensure that we protect the breeding grounds for the fisheries. I mentioned earlier we have a marine research institute that ensures we have demarcated areas and train our people and do research on the fish stocks within mm. our EEZ. Mm. So that challenge of overfishing within the Kenyan space, we have not really experienced it, okay. but it's something that can really create a global challenge mm. within the space. Mm. So it's something we are really looking into and we are working closely with other bodies to mm. ensure that it's, uh, it's looked into. Mm. Um, when you look at the conservation of the marita marine areas and especially not only in the coast, but looking at how the water bodies, mm -hmm. if you could call it so, mm -hmm. have been diminishing. Some areas you go to, of course, due to climate change, you will hear there used to be a river here, it no longer flows. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be a lake here, it's, you know, has reduced into a swamp mm -hmm. and now it's dry land. How affected, if you could demystify, has the maritime space and the water bodies and the blue economy space been affected by, uh, you know, the climate change and the climate change conversation and how perhaps are you mitigating to ensure that whereas you are losing X uh, percentage, you are also rebuilding and trying to restore another X percentage? Yes, of course, uh, climate change has affected the global yeah. space and also it has affected Kenya. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the coastal region, for example, mm. the issue of mangroves, there's been a, a lot of uh, mangrove trees being cut mm -hmm. by the fisher community. And why are they doing this? It's because they need firewood mm. so that they can be able to, you know, provide food on the table. Yes. So how can we ensure that uh, we do capacity building, which mm -hmm. we are doing, mm. and show them the importance of these mangroves? Mangroves are the breeding grounds for the fish. The fish, yes. So if we cut, then we'll deplete the stock. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing as a government is to sensitize the fisher community, the importance of, of course, uh, planting trees, which is also mangroves, which covers that space, mm -hmm. and the conservation of it. As much as we require this uh, firewood, how can we do it sustainably? Remember when we did the introduction, you can exploit the resources within the blue space, but sustainably. sustainably. So that's the component we are looking at. We're also looking at also coral reef restoration. Mm. The coral reef is usually damaged by vessels like the trawlers that come and just damage the ground of the, or rather the seabed yeah, yeah. of the ocean. Mm. So we ensure that we regulate that space. If it's a trawler, they cannot come and do fishing onshore. They have to do it a bit offshore. Mm -hmm. So those are the areas, all the elements we are looking into. Mm. We have put regulations in place. I mentioned earlier we have a regulator, which is Kenya Fisheries Service, that ensures all those components are adhered to. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we sensitize our communities to mm -hmm. ensure that they protect the resources, because we need these resources as food security and also as revenue generating. Mm -hmm.